It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk, and let's talk now about some of the stuff that's going to be happening at the Illinois State House this week. Of course, session ends April 8th. It's a Friday, uh, and that means we could see a budget before then. Now, typically, the budget year starts July 1st, uh, and as we've seen in the past, session days typically go until May 31st. There's been a few times where that's been extended a few days, and then, gosh, I remember being in there in 2017 for the ongoing budget impasse we were in cover in session uh all the way through the independence day weekend that was just uh, horrible so we're looking forward to uh, uh april 8th adjournment and it's expected they'll have a budget more than 42 billion dollars of spending could be even higher than that uh and uh it's going to be a lot of spending on things but also some consideration about changing tax policy but are these changes to tax policy going to be permanent or are they going to be temporary democrats at the state house is particularly in the senate they proposed a package that uh, includes uh, a variety of different tax cuts or tax programs one would be uh earned income tax credit another would be a $500 tax credit for volunteer firefighters another would increase the teacher tax credit from 200 to 250 uh so they can use that to you know buy materials or whatnot so those are types of things that would be permanent uh some of the temporary things would be a one-time income tax payout of a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars per uh joint filers and i think like fifty dollars extra per kid uh, you also have the idea of increasing um, uh, some kind of property tax rebate of up to $300, but again, that would be one time. Plus, you have uh, the idea of giving a tax holiday for school supplies and for you know clothing and stuff for kids to go back to school, uh, and that would be during a certain week in August, uh, and again, temporary, one time. Uh, but another uh, couple of ideas here is the 1% on groceries that uh, the governor proposed back in February. Uh, he wants to freeze that. He also wants to freeze what hasn't even taken into effect yet, and that is a, uh, a tax increase on fuel that's pegged to inflation every July 1st. This was part of the package back in 2019, Rebuild Illinois, that had the gas tax go from the state portion, 19 cents, doubling that to 38 cents. And it would also tack on extra gas tax pegged to inflation each year thereafter. We've already seen that two years prior. Now we're going to see another tax increase on gas, but with high fuel prices and increased inflation, you're hearing uh, the, the pressures at the pumps. People are seeing it when they're driving by. They're seeing it in their wallets. Will this tax holiday of sorts, which is only temporary, only for six months on a tax that hasn't even taken place yet, is that real relief? Republicans say they want to see permanent relief and structural reforms. Is that part of this package? Not necessarily, but again, all of these are moving pieces that are going to be ultimately coming together before Friday. And here we are on Monday. To react to some of that, and in particular, the idea of the, uh, the, the freezing of a gas tax increase that hasn't even kicked in yet, is that really relief? Josh Sharps with the Illinois Fuel and Retailers Association joining us now on Springfield's Morning News. Josh, thanks for taking time. You guys have been uh, talking about this issue for for months now, uh, even longer than that. You guys have had this issue of Illinois' high tax on gasoline uh, on your radar for years as uh, you have members that are impacted directly by this by being fuel retailers. So what's your take on what you heard Friday from Illinois Senate Democrats? Well, uh, let me first of all say good morning, Greg. Thanks for having me on. Um, our take on, I think, the proposal that was released prior. Josh, your phone broke up just a little bit as I queued you up. It just uh, it, it broke up just a little bit. Uh, if you could uh, that. yeah, re, re, rehash that. Sure. Uh, I, I think uh, our, our take on what took place on Friday with the Senate Democrats' proposal is that, I, I mean, I think we're thankful to other other legislative caucuses uh, are now, you know, uh, offering up proposals to do something about high gas prices. I think their proposal uh, on Friday falls a little short. As you pointed out, it in no way lowers uh, existing gas prices. All it does is stop a tax increase from happening. Um, there's other proposals out there, I think the Senate Republican, that uh, would uh, cap Illinois sales tax on fuel. 
Uh, Illinois being one of only, I think, six states that actually imposes a sales tax on top of its motor fuel tax. So I think there's other ways to get uh, more welcome relief to Illinois motorists who are who are already paying, I think, the second highest gas taxes in the country. I think California uh, is only higher than Illinois. There are other there are other proposals out there that do that, and I just don't think the one we saw on Friday goes quite uh, quite far enough. What are your members experiencing right now? Um, not just from the current state of you know high gas prices and high taxes on top of those high gas prices, but what have they been experiencing for years leading up to this point? Especially those who live on uh, and, and operate on border yeah. communities. Yeah. The ones in the border communities, just like you said, I mean, it's been it's ever since the 2019 doubling of the gas tax has been really difficult for them. Uh, I think Missouri's taxes are less than half of Illinois. So, I mean, if you're a motorist that, you know, or you're a citizen that lives along the Missouri border, you know that if you, a, a simple trip across the river is going to, you know, be less than, you know, half uh, of Illinois taxes on a gallon of fuel. And it makes our members uh, all that more uncompetitive. Uh, uh, Iowa's gas taxes are also um, a lot lower than Illinois. So it's difficult for those, uh, for those border communities, or my members in those border communities, I, I think, to compete uh, in this kind of environment. Josh Sharp is with the Illinois Fuel and Retail Association, joining us here on Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. So we've got these different proposals. Of course, the governor proposing this before the gas spiked uh, considerably back in February, he proposed Mm -hmm. uh, freezing that uh, increase in the uh, um, uh, gas tax. Then you had Republicans come out and say, hey, let's just cap the sales taxes on top of that. Uh, With the increased fuel costs, the state's getting a windfall from that anyways. They weren't expecting that. So we should go ahead and cap that. And then the Senate Democrats come out with this. Do you, as somebody who watches the state house closely, Josh, do you think that there's going to be some, some amendments made, some, uh, some changes, some, some kind of, um, uh, you know, common ground that can be found between uh, what seems to be two different uh, proposals here? I do. I I don't think anything is a, is a done deal yet at the state house. Uh, the press conference on Friday, I believe one of the senators, I think it was Senator Sims, remarked, you know, that this is just a proposal at this point. I don't think the House Democrats or, their, or the governor um, had signed on to what we saw on Friday, uh, although, you know, there's, I, I think, been discussions over the weekend. But I do. I think there's a way forward, and hopefully we can get some uh, real meaningful uh, relief passed for gas taxes before the end of this week. Something that goes beyond simply, you know, stopping a gas tax that hasn't even gone into effect yet and calling that relief. Because, again, there's other ways to do this and there's other ways that I think will really uh, offer measurable uh, results uh, for consumers at the pump. Josh Sharp with the Illinois Fuel and Retail Association. Appreciate you taking time this morning and uh, connecting to get uh, the industry's uh, take on what they uh, saw released on Friday. And we'll be watching closely to see what ultimately happens before this Friday. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. All right. You got it, Greg. Thanks. It is Springfield's morning news.